So welcome to part three of lecture 20 for math 2R03. In this part, we want to kind of introduce generalized eigenvectors. And I kind of want to start with kind of some motivation about why we might want to do that. Now, given any linear operator, one of the things we want to do is we want to rewrite, rewrite V as a direct sum of subspaces so that t is invariant on each of these subspaces. So when we look at t restricted to each any of these uis, you get spent back to an element back in ui. And we can do this if we can find a basis of eigenvectors, uh, uh, a, a basis of eigenvectors of v. Okay, this is actually what's the point of chapter five. So this was the point of chapter five in the textbook. Now kind of going back to the example that I started with in today's lecture, if we consider the linear map given by taking the pair x, y, and so that the second coordinate becomes the first coordinate and the second coordinate becomes zero, you can't find a basis of eigenvectors. Uh, and that's kind of the, the problem, right? There's just not enough, not enough, I, so I'll put not enough, eigenvectors. So we could we could build things nicely if we had enough eigenvectors. We could satisfy the original problem. So what we need is somehow we're lacking eigenvectors, right? We need more eigenvectors. So where where could we find these eigenvectors? So to get these eigenvectors that we're missing, we're going to introduce what is called a generalized eigenvector. And so Again, kind of like an eigenvalue is fixed. So suppose that T is your linear operator and you have an eigenvalue of T. Then V is a generalized eigenvector of T corresponding to this eigenvalue if what you require is that T minus lambda I raised to the power of J times V is equal to zero for some j greater than or equal to one. Okay, so why is this generalized? Okay, well, when we look at an eigenvector, what we require is this exponent to be one. So we're looking at the operator t minus lambda i. But instead of looking at just the case where j is equal to one, we say that, well, it doesn't may not have to be one, but it could be two, it could be three, it could be four, as long as it satisfies some power of this. Okay, and now let me tie it to kind of what we were talking about at the beginning of the lecture. Remember, this is asking for an element V in the null space of this operator. So we're looking at the operator T minus lambda I, and based upon what we had before is we get this sequence of subspaces, right? So we have the zero vectors in the null space of this space right here. And the null space of this operator is in the null space of this operator. And we can take higher and higher powers. Okay. And what we introduced before was the eigenspace, right? So the eigenspace was what we had where all of our just regular eigenvectors were. So those were corresponding to the power of one. And what you can see is that in some cases these spaces will get bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay. And Somehow this is where we can get more vectors. These are kind of the vectors that we're missing um, that we didn't see before. So somehow taking the null space of this operator, which is what we did when we find eigenvectors, just isn't big enough. We may have to crank up the power of the operator. Okay, so let me just give you an example of this. Kind of let's talk about our favorite example today. So it's the same operator. And we know that uh, lam lambda equals zero is um, the eigenvalue. Is the eigenvalue? Maybe we have to make make this a little look clearer. It's the only eigenvalue, and it's something we proved in our last lecture. So it's the only eigenvalue. Now we saw that x zero is an eigenvalue of lambda, and why is that? Well, it's because when we plug in x zero, it gets sent to the vector 0, 0, and that's the same thing as 0 times the vector x0. Okay. On the other hand, any vector 
okay, inside of our field S squared is a general eigen, generalized eigenvalue of lambda equals zero, since when we plug, plug this vector into t minus zero i squared x y, because this is zero, this is just the same thing as t squared x y. So we're doing t evaluated at t evaluated at x y. The first time we apply the operator t to x y, we get t y zero. And when we apply it again, we get zero zero, which is zero times the vector we started with. So any vector is a generalized eigenvector. And so that means that the null space of the operator t minus lambda i squared is actually all of f squared, all of f squared. Okay, so kind of to see the uh, subspaces here, we have zero. We have the null space of t minus lambda i. And last time we saw that this was just the span of the single vector one zero. And this is strictly contained inside of the null space of t minus lambda i squared, which in this case is c squared. So remember at the beginning, we kind of said, well, we didn't have enough eigenvalues, kind of like we only had one eigenvalue. But if we look at the square, suddenly we're, we're getting another vector because this is a one dimensional space and here's another, this is a two dimensional vector space. So there's gonna be vectors we haven't seen before. So in the, in the next part, I just wanna kind of introduce some more terminology about how we're going to capture all of these generalized eigenvalues.